there fellow Halloween enthusiasts and monster lovers, it's time to cut to another visit to the Mask Fanatic, where all you Mask Fanatics can look for cool and interesting old Halloween ma Okay, there's, there's a nail every two inches except when I want there to be one. Uh, well, there's one over there, it'll do. Good evening. Enough small talk. Let's get right on to tonight's mask. A great little number from the always impressive Death Studios. This one's from way back in the 1980s and it's called Bite. That's right, simply Bite, B-I-T-E. Now, uh, a lot of people thought at the time that, uh, and people still think it, I'm sure, think this mask was based on the Chatterer, which is one of the Senno Bites from the Hellraiser movies. But I gotta tell you, the mask actually came along first. This mask existed before the Cenobites, before the first Hellraiser came out. Uh, whether or not anybody who designed the monsters for the film uh, saw this mask, I don't know. It, it, there doesn't seem to be any reason to think that. It seems to be purely a coincidence. But whether it is or whether it isn't, it's a cool mask. Now, uh, Bite here was sculpted by a guy called Steve Fiorello, who was a wonderfully talented artist, very, very talented guy, sadly no longer with us, but uh, well remembered for many years of wonderful artwork. And uh, when you look at this thing, you might wonder, is it an alien from space? Is it a uh, genetic mutation or scientific experiment gone wrong of some sort? Is it a a demonic entity? Is it a ghost? You can't really tell. Well, what inspired it was in fact a creepy photo from a creepy book about uh, real-life uh, deformities and freaks and so forth. And there was a photo in that book, this is back in the 80s, there was a photo in that book of a baby who had been born with no face and just a mouth. And Steve Fiorillo was so creeped out by that photo, he got to thinking, wouldn't it be scary if there was a monster like that that basically didn't have any face at all except for a mouth. Now the specifics of it and the fact that it looks a little bit on the uh, science fiction-y uh, side, all those details and contours and structural uh, design elements and so forth were made up by Steve Fiorella for the character. Now, Death Studio Mask has been in and out of production ever since. Uh, it's been discontinued and then brought back uh, it still looks pretty much the same, except the older ones uh, back in the 80s were more of a uh, grayish brown uh, tan uh, flesh tone, and the, the more recent ones are pinker than that. But not Horace Pinker. Not that kind of Pinker. By the way, 10 points if you know who Horace Pinker is. I said that, but what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Bite. Anyway, Bite here was not actually in the Hellraiser movies, although some people think he was, and if you want to go as a Cenobite from Hellraiser, actually, this would be a fine mask to use for that, and uh, sort of make up your own Cenobite-y costume, uh, and, and make up your own details for it. it. It would make a good mask for that. It's an excellent quality mask, full head, little slit up the back, very nicely painted, like everything from Death Studios. All the Death Studio uh, quality is really first rate. If you, I find that if I like it in the photo on the website or the catalog or whatever, if I like the photo, I'm probably going to like it in person too because quality control is pretty good at Death Studios. But anyway, you did not see him in uh, Hellraiser, but you might have seen him in another movie if you were unlucky enough to have seen a 1988 atrocity um, classic called Saturday the 14th Strikes Back. Now, I was actually in Saturday the 14th Strikes Back, but I wasn't playing him. That's another story for another uh, uh, rainy Thursday morning. Yes, uh, even though it's not Thursday morning and it's not rainy right now. I don't know why I said that. We'll edit that out. Anyway, uh, in Saturday the 14th Strikes Back, which was made in 1988, you can see in at least one shot, very briefly, maybe more than that, it's been a long time, I don't entirely remember the details, but at least in one shot you can see Bite come running along. Uh, it takes place in the scene at the golf course the part of the movie at the miniature golf course, Bite comes running across the screen and looks around and runs off. And uh, he may have been visible in some other shots, but you do get one decent look at him in that golf course sequence. And uh, at that point, uh, Bite was wearing, with the mask, the suit worn by Guy Thorpe, who was the guy who played the Bite monster in that scene. The costume was actually a Cayman lizard outfit made by Laura. You know Laura, right? Laura Lady, my wife Laura, yeah. 
Laura made a Cayman Lizard outfit that was a replica of the one worn by the Cayman Lizard character in the Roger Corman uh, Star Wars knockoff Battle Beyond the Stars from 1980, which by the way is a pretty good movie. I like Battle Beyond the Stars. Maybe not the work of uh, brilliant ultimate sophistication or anything like that, maybe not entirely genius, but a lot of fun to watch and has tons of good work in it and is funny and involving and uh, I like Battle Beyond the Stars. But anyway, a character in it named Cayman Lizard wore this uh, green plasticky looking uniform with metal uh, connectors and things on it and Laura made a copy of that uh, costume and it ended up worn by the Bite Monster played by Guy Thorpe ever briefly in Saturday the 14th Strikes Back in 1988. Now uh, whatever you want to do with this mask again whether you think of it as a ghost or a demon or an alien or whatever it is it's such a great mask I think every collection should have one. So I hope it'll still be uh, in production and still be available from Death Studios when you see this. I hope. I hope so. Uh, so that you can get one and be as delighted as I am to have a thing that looks like this in your home. Thank you. And until next time, this is me in the attic reminding you two wrongs don't make a bite.